back to talk to my fellow Yoruba people, my West Africans. This is for y'all. So, as I do my my study and I guess strategizing and just looking at all the issues that seem to occur continuously in uh, West Africa, uh, I, I've come to the uh, conclusion that in order for West Africa to really improve, we are going to have to be the ones to liberate it. It's not going to be the politicians. Unfortunately, it's not really going to be solely the people that are living in the country that, that grew up there. It's, it's going to be us. And it's two reasons why. So the first one, our experience. So it plays on our psyche when, or it plays on people's psyche, depending on the, the, the environment that you grew up in. So if you grew up in an environment that is very stressful, lack of opportunities, never know what the future holds, don't know if you're going to eat, don't know if you're going to make money, and you've been living in this situation for years and years and years, over time that starts to, to really wreak havoc on your mind, on your body because of the stress, your psyche. Your mentality it starts to be warped and you start getting into the mode of scarcity. You start really having that scarcity mindset versus someone that grew up in an environment where for the most part they had opportunities afforded to them. They had the backing of social programs if economy goes wrong or you know just mishaps in life. They have a couple entities supporting their progression as far as being a contributed contributing member of society it it makes you think and look at life a different way you have the luxury of seeing long term of really being um ingenuitive in in, in a lot of uh, circumstances to you know just scope the life that you want to have so when I look at, when I just look at uh, all the news reports and everything that continues to go on and, you know, just the politicians, we already know that a lot of them are just career politicians. They go through the same universities. We know a lot of universities. So, so now I'm going to be specifically talking about Nigeria. There's a lot of bribery. The books are old. Um... Just a lot of BS that goes on. And then, you know, if you pay your way, you can get high. If you sleep your way, you can graduate. All the stuff goes on. It's not really talked about. They get their degrees. And it's just like, okay, well, let me go just go into politics, be a career politician. And then, you know, it goes on from there. It seems a lot of them just don't understand having the correct team with them. There's two governors really one that I want to speak of um, Mackenday um, of Oil State that he's completely different from any other governors I ever known about so and I think um, a nuclear state governor uh, maybe I think one of them is pretty good but he just stands out from the rest and when I looked at his bio I start to see oh because this dude traveled been to the US went to um, school in the US had um, worked at some U.S. companies, then went to Nigeria, I think did a, a stint in Canada or U.K., I can't remember, but he has out-of-Nigeria experience, and that's what sets him apart. He looks at life a, look, a bit differently, and he also understands the importance of having diasporans contributing and investing in oil state. All the other governors I've seen or I know about do not seem to reach out to the ones in the diaspora for whatever reason they just see it as it's it's it doesn't cross their mind and I'm thinking if you're really for the people you're looking at all avenues to to um, make your people better 
funny enough, a lot of them will look at white people to help them. They will look at the Chinese, Asians to invest with them. And I guess to a lesser extent, Indians. But I don't really see a push. Now, if I'm wrong, I mean, please correct me, but I don't really see a push or calling for the Nigerians in the diaspora to come and help build up our our um, our country or our state or our land our region I don't see it so there you have a situation where it's just endless poverty and and nothing seems to be changing uh, this goes maybe Ghana is a little bit different but the other African, West African nations, I kind of see the same thing. I don't really see a call to action for those in the diaspora to come back and really take your time to, you know, work with, you know, send out that olive branch so we can actually get on the same footing. I just don't see it. And I'm just like, why not? So, I mean, it's, it's not just the, it's not just the experience, it's also... I think this the second thing how can I put this in words I don't know we're, we're uh, we better understand our adversaries we better understand what's what's at stake what's going on outside the walls I think Africa as a whole is starting to catch up on because of China and what they're doing on what's going on but because we live next to races as people, we know the bullshit and a lot of what goes on, um, whether it be in media, the images that they put out of, of black people in media, uh, how they do the music. I see a lot of Afrobeat artists that seem to copy some of the stuff that rappers here in the US do, and they don't fully understand why they're doing it. I can tell, I mean, they're just ignorant on it. Like two things I, I just never understood when I saw, when I looked at um, Afrobeat videos, I was like, the first one, why are they, why are they saying nigga? Like, you know, that part, I, I get it if you're in the US, but even in, in UK, I just didn't understand why are you, why are you using the N word? Do you, you really don't, you just copy what they do. And then the sagging of the pants. So they definitely don't know where that stemmed from as well. And it's just like, you're just copying shit that, you know, our adversaries just put out to denigrate us as a people. And then you just pick it up. So I think us in the, in the diaspora have a better grip of what's going on. The subliminal, um, subliminal messages that, that are, are fed through media. And we have a shorter tolerance for, for the BS versus um, you know, those on the actual continent in the, in the region, West Africa, they are, their mind is set on, oh, I just need, I just need to get to the West. I just need to get to the West. It's going to be heaven. It's going to be better. I can't take it no more. And they just, they just, they don't focus on the racism like that. In my opinion, for what I've seen, it's just getting to the West and they don't understand, Hey, you got a lot of opportunities here. Maybe if you want to go to the West, go to the West, but it shouldn't be to stay. So I think um, those are the two reasons why I believe that it's going to be us in the diaspora that has to, um, that's going to be able to uplift uh, West Africa. We have the intellect, we have the experience, and we understand our adversaries. We understand what's at stake better than the ones on ground. And it's not to um, it's 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 not to look down on the ones that are are there in uh, West Africa, but it's just to say like, hey, look, you can't do it by yourself. It's you prove that you can't do it by yourself. A lot of the politicians that you have now, you voted for them. So to complain now, you I mean, you're voting for the same. Uh, corrupt politicians that already had a track record of corruption before they got into office y'all need some help and you know I doubt that they'll say it but at least us on our end we can at least come and say like hey look maybe maybe we need to uh, take that first step and say look 
you know what we we ain't trying to you know be paternalistic to y'all but uh we see the benefit in us working together and over time trust will build and maybe you never you know next century or whatever we can be you know be uh those dominant um empires that uh once ruled once ruled the world